five-ish fangirls, I love you. And I'm one of the five-ish. In fact, I'm the biggest one of the five-ish. I am the sixth Doctor Colin Baker, and I wish you all well. Have fun. The tangents as we continue all the way to episode 102 of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. And, you know, convention season is kind of winding down a little bit. Not quite yet. We, we still got some stuff coming up. So it's time to talk about another local convention. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like we do every week. We'll go on the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Mitch in Kitchener, Ontario. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Holly is off visiting family, which is totally allowed. So hopefully she's enjoying herself. No, it's not allowed. (laughs) Do that. Uh, we don't care that you haven't seen these people in like two years. It doesn't matter. You gotta spend your time with us. No. Just kidding, Holly. Yeah, yeah, we, just, yeah, you're, it's, all it's all good. good. Yeah. <laughs> just messing with you. So we do have uh, a fifth person with us, though. We are very excited. We have a guest. We've been doing a lot of guests recently. It's been quite fun. Um, so this week joining us is uh, Mike Trent, who is, I don't know what your actual official title is. But <laughs> I wear a lot of hats. Okay. My official title is um, Communications Director. Okay, so he is officially the Communications Director of the Midwest Toy Fest. So first of all, thank you for taking time to uh, join us, especially considering you know your event is in a couple of months, and I'm sure you're very busy. Um, so... Uh, well, Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm I'm always happy to talk about con stuff anytime. Oh, yes. Me too. We all are. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, just kind of going over your website. I mean, this looks pretty exciting what you what you've got going on. So uh, uh, why don't you just kind of give us a rundown, like the basics of Midwest Toy Fest, what uh, what what you guys kind of specialize in? Sure. Um, We uh, you know, we're a toy centric two day convention. Um, we have, uh, a significant number of, you know, comic book vendors and, and things coming, um, lots of cosplay, um, hopefully some, you know, some game vendors. Um, I haven't checked the, the most recent signups for that. So I'm not sure if we've got any on board yet, but last year we did have a few. Um, and you know, we just kind of get together and have a good time and, and, uh, kind of wanted to create a space where, you know, people could come and, and kind of share their passions. Very nice. Very so I, I attended last year. Um, only went the one day. I guess I had something else going on the other day. I don't remember. <laughs> it's been so long ago. It's actually the event, the, the, the Midwest Toy Fest, was, it was earlier in the year last year, right? Yeah, it was. We were in June last year. Yeah. And we ended up moving to November um this year just looking at our calendars and and trying to we have a very small staff so so trying to figure out what we could actually accomplish and not you know let people down we we needed a little bit more time and Mm -hmm. it seemed like the the schedule just overall in indianapolis was a little bit more jam-packed yeah in in june you know so we we thought we'd move later in the year yeah yeah november kind of seems to be sort of an off season if you could really think of that for conventions but yeah there's not a lot of conventions generally speaking going around in november so you might yeah that that that, that ought to it's kind of a drought like people are yeah <laughs> getting geared up for christmas and uh, then there's there's not much so you know it's kind of kind of a, a nice change of pace probably for people yeah that's that's what we're hoping i mean we, we yeah. kind of looked at the calendar and felt like there was a pretty decent sized hole there and obviously there's the holidays and things coming up and we we decided to you know if if we went early in November, then maybe it wouldn't be as big of an issue. And mm-hmm. um, hopefully you know, it's that last, you know, fun thing that, that you can do before going into the holidays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And since you guys, you know, it is a, a toy-centric event, and I know that, you know, last year there were a lot of vendors that were selling 
vintage stuff and even some new stuff too so it's also a good opportunity for people to uh, maybe do some last minute Christmas shopping <laughs> or create your uh, last minute wish list for somebody else to buy for you mm -hmm. yes that that's that that as well <laughs> Yeah. Or you say, here, I bought this. Give it to me for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, here, I saw this. Here's the here's the uh, the shop's business card. <laughs> See if they'll ship it. <laughs> Maybe even gift wrap it for you. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind of like the idea of it being in, in early November because summer tends to be very con-heavy and tends to be very the very large cons, so people's right. wallets get hit really hard. <laughs> I know a lot of people, you know, like for me and a lot of my my friends that are local in the area, you know, like Gen Con, we just had Gen Con a couple weeks ago, and Gen Con was kind of, a lot of us were like, okay, Gen Con, this is my last big con for the year because my wallet is going to cry if I go to anything else, but then you still have things like, you know, uh, I think Matsuri Con was going on this weekend. Dragon Con's coming up in a couple of weeks. So there's still a couple of large cons that um, okay. I know people, at least in Indiana, sometimes go to. So, you know, having having this event later in the year gives their wallets a chance to <laughs> catch up, I guess. Yeah, well, and, and not just not just the money, but it's just also, you know, you, you do get burned out with so many group together so yeah like mm -hmm. you know we're, we're this we're like you said mike this is you know you, you looked at the calendar where there's a a hole to fill and you guys filled it so good job when i was going to you know all these conventions thinking you know oh i can limit myself to this or that and that goes out the window about the first five minutes so oh yeah yeah my my husband and i are planning a we're, we're going to salt lake comic-con next week and we're like oh how much can we spend how much can we budget it's going all out the window once we get on that vendor's floor mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Mike, why don't you, um, I mean, is this the second year then that this has gone on or has this been going on for a while? This is our second year. Um, okay. All, all the group that, that puts this together had volunteered for other shows and things in the past and mm -hmm. we really liked working with each other. So we thought, Hey, why not, you know, create something. Um, it seemed like it'd be a lot of fun for us to do at least speaking for myself, I needed a distraction from uh, my day job, which mm -hmm. has been, you know, stressful the last couple of years. So this is my, this is my fun version of work. Okay. So, so how did you get, how did you get started? Like you kind of alluded to it a little bit, but like more specifically, what, what got you into, you know, hosting a convention and, and just how did, how did that come about? How did, how did Midwest Toy Fest come about? Well, we, um, you know, speaking for me personally, I, I was into a lot of, you know, geeky, nerdy stuff growing up. And once I got into college, it kind of became all about college. And I was, you know, all, all of my money kind of went towards just putting myself through school. So mm -hmm. I kind of got out of it for a while. And then here, I don't know, the last five years or so, I started to get back into it. But now, you know, as an adult, I have a different perspective and I wanted to do something that engaged or built or helped or participated in the community that we have here which i think is amazing and so we i started looking for you know things that i could help with or things that i could do and it kind of just culminated in, in this this project of you know hey why don't we put on a show and it kind of snowballed from there i mean i didn't start out with the with the idea at the beginning of we're going to put on a two-day show of some kind mm -hmm. but uh, as as things grew you know it was very organic I mean, it's kind of like um pickup stick or something like that where it's like each each thing you know kind of leads you to another decision another decision by the time you get down you know the road you're like holy cow i've committed to this and this and this so very good yeah it's just so i i do i do have one question though because i'm just looking at your website and uh, some of the stuff you have planned Indie Brick Expo. Sure, this yeah. looks this looks amazing. Can I can, can I ask you about that one? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, one of the things that is important to me and to us is trying to work with other people, other groups, um, and to bring about you know some cool stuff. You know, we want people to come and have a good time. That's oh, that's yeah. the you know the driving force here. Um, 
we're not really into, you know, limiting or trying to be a gatekeeper and say only these people can come or only this Mm -hmm. kind of vendor or only if it's, you know, the kind of art that I like, that's the only people that are coming. Um, We want it to be, you know, everybody's thing. Mm -hmm. We want everyone to have a, have a slice of it. And so uh, one of the people we ended up talking to um, is a Lego vendor and he was willing to put on, you know, a little kind of a mini event within our event. Mm-hmm. Um, call. And he decided to call it Indie Brick Expo, and it's going to be. We're going to give him some square footage, and he's going to have these huge Lego displays. Um, wow. There's going to be some events that he puts on where you can come in and you can build stuff. There's going to be hands-on you know, things where like tubs of stuff that you can build, and there's. I think he's going to have a competition. Um, it's like it almost sounded like a um, like a magic booster draft kind of mm-hmm. thing. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but. Um, it's like you get the same parts, everyone gets the same mm-hmm. parts, and you have to either build it the quickest or build it, build the most interesting thing out of it. Um, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. It's, that, that was something that we felt like would really add a lot to it, and it was something that we could, you know, do that would, would add a new dynamic to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, and it, and it fits right in with your, with, you know, Toy Fest, you know, Legos and and things like that, and people are really into that. So that's, oh yeah. I mean, Lego, if you can partner with things, that's that's you know added bonus to you guys, and only in your second year. So high praise there. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we're really excited about, I don't think we've added it to the website yet, but um, we're going to host the Indie Pod Net Awards mm-hmm. this year, which is um, a guy named John Graham who runs a show called The Independent Show. Um, he kind of went from having two shows a year and he decided he wanted to have one show a year and focus, you know, more on that. So he's been having that show within mm-hmm. the uh, Hoosier Con show. They've been giving him some space and he's been doing it there. And we had offered him space to do his show at our show, you know, within our show in the fall. Oh, that way you'd have a event space and he wouldn't have to secure that on, on his own. And he ended up going to just the one show, but then he did contact us and said, we need somewhere to do our pod, sh- our pod net awards our, for podcasts. And we were like, sure, we'll give you, you know, we'll give you the main stage. You know, come on in. So we've got that set up too. That, that, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, I was a presenter last time, so I got to see the, the first show. Mm-hmm. And I think this will be, a, this will be a good step, you know, above that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was at the, the fall independent <laughs> show last year for the first ever, uh, any, Podnet Awards, and we had we had entered, we didn't win anything, but that's okay. But I was on a, 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 I don't know if John's planning on doing any sort of panels within the 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 event or not. But in, he did some podcasting related panels at last year that I was on, and that was pretty fun. John's a a nice guy, um, and I'm, I'm excited that you know he's found a, a a bit of space in your guys's event because I think that I know John's very passionate about uh, local podcasting um, and uh, as obviously as a podcaster and <laughs> someone part of a podcast and happens to be I happen to be in Indiana um, that, that, that I'm glad that there's someone there that's uh, um, trying to help boost yeah, us anybody, podcasters anybody. along <laughs> so <laughs> anytime we say someone trying to you know trying to enrich, you know, kind of the community. We try to help them or mm-hmm. work with them or do whatever we can to support them. So Absolutely. And, and, it's, uh, it's, yeah. and it's kind of what you were saying earlier, Mike, was about, you know, you didn't want to just be a gatekeeper and, and say, well, this is all we're going to do and everybody else can go away. It's, you know, you want to open it up and say, yeah, cosplayers or, or you know, other kind of games and things like that. If you're interested in it, let's let's do that. And I see that a lot with like Comic Cons. Some some of kind of the old guard, as I like to call them, they like to say, "Oh, it's just a Comic Con. What it what are you know TV shows or or art, fan art, or games or cosplay? What does that have to do with any of it?" And I just kind of laugh at them because I'm like, "Oh my goodness, you just you, you have to broaden your horizons, guys. <laughs> Come on, we're all right. fans here." Well, I mean. I- I've always, I'm always kind of mystified with the idea where it's like someone else's enjoyment of something somehow diminishes your enjoyment of it. Like Exactly. It's like, you know, I, I mean, I want as many people 
as who want to to come and enjoy you know I want to share what I enjoy with people and I've gone so long with people saying oh you're such a nerd for liking x y and z and now I'm like there are people who like what I like come on let's all have fun together right exactly and, and if if you like things for different reasons that's a okay you know that's oh totally you don't have to have the same opinion or you know you don't have to have the same favorite character or the same favorite show like it's and and, and I've also I've always found it really off-putting, the idea of, like, well, you're not a real nerd because of this. Or... <laughs> it's like having a competition. I'm like, who says who's a real nerd? I can do right. whatever the heck I want. Right. I mean, you know, it's – everyone started out, you know, with their first comic of, you know, comic book of something or their first TV show or their first whatever, and they learned it. You know, they learned that topic or that – that story or that character or whatever it was. And now you're going to look down on somebody who's starting out at the exact same place that you did however many years ago. That just seems so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we've mentioned before, or well, I've, I've mentioned specifically, I, I have a friend who I, I do it, who runs a D and D group with us. And there's a lot of stuff that he knows of that I just, I haven't heard of. So he'll talk about these things. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And rather than, get all you know snippy and say oh well you know what kind of nerd are you he gets excited and he says oh my gosh i get to share this with you and you know and so and i'm like i like that attitude i think more people should have that absolutely i mean and the the thing is with this is a great time to be a geek or nerd because there's such a influx of you know people coming into to the the fandoms Mm -hmm. and it that's allowing us to have, you know, these massive movies and, you know, TV shows and things that we never, you know, in the, the 80s or 70s or whatever, would have never imagined that this could be, a, you know, a reality. Yeah, and it, and it allows you guys to, to, for these conventions to be popular and, and be a gathering place for, for like-minded people because, you know, like you are saying back in the day, some of us were kind of, you know, closeted, as it were, to... <laughs> To, to these things and you couldn't you couldn't share it but you know the the kid who liked the football team you know he could put posters up on their lockers and and that would be fine and i did that but i also had like powerpuff girls or sailor moon sitting on next to my next to my football heroes so you know it, it takes all sorts and now we Absolutely. get to share that with everybody else mm-hmm. anyway sorry i kind of cut on a little soapbox <laughs> there <laughs> that's our speciality of soapboxes <laughs> <laughs> you give me a topic, Mike, and I just go on and on. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Hey, no, that hey, that's why we have, you know, that's why we like bringing guests on, you know, not only to, you know, allow you a, a outlet to, you know, plug your whatever it is in this in this case your your event, but uh, also to, uh, you know, odds are you're a fellow geek and nerd and. <laughs> Or we can we can all just we can all talk shop. We yeah we can talk shop essentially <laughs> and, and geek out over things. So very cool, very cool. So there's the obviously the Indie Podnet Awards uh, going on, then the the uh, the the Indie Brick Expo. Um, what else? I, obviously, you know the your event's not till early November. It's mid late August as we're recording this. So. You know, you're still working on on arranging things, but are there any other uh, events or anything else you want to uh, highlight at this point that you know is going to be happening? Well, the the best thing this I had so much fun at this this thing last year that I, to me it was the highlight of the show. We brought uh, Stuart Sager back, who's a, a local artist, and he's going to do his drink and draw again um, Saturday night. And, and it was so much fun last year, and, and people really got into it. We had a lot of, you know, people who are aspiring artists or are artists now, and people who were just, you know, just fans or whatever, just all sitting in a room drawing, you know, the assignment and talking and having a good time. It was it was great. So that's going to happen again this year. I'm really really excited about that. Very nice, very nice. I think I remember seeing seeing that on the schedule and thinking, oh, that would be fun, but then I couldn't make it, so I may have to try and fit that in this year. So I, I highly recommend it. It was, <laughs> it was 
my first event of any kind like that, and yeah. I had a really good time. I didn't, you know, I didn't expect it to be that fun. Like I, you know, I, I was like, okay, this is going to be the last thing of a very long day, and yeah, we'll see how this goes. But it was, it was a really great time. Yeah, yeah, very much. Come, come to it this year, but don't draw on this tablecloth, please. Okay. <laughs> We, we had to pay for several tablecloths last well, year because people couldn't control themselves. And yeah, <laughs> bring 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 your own pen and paper. Yeah. Is what you're saying, <laughs> if you want to draw, <laughs> little paper we placemats. Provided at least last year, we provided markers and, and uh, crayons and, and paper. But um, some people just kind of uh, went off on their own, I guess. <laughs> well, was, you know, it is it a several drink weeks later in and draw. draw. <laughs> and it was like. What really? People drew on the tablecloths. Yeah, <laughs> I have to remember that. Hope I, I, I'm not the best artist, but I think I can keep it on the paper. So <laughs> I got that going <laughs> for me. I guess. I guess it depends entirely on how much drink you have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that does make a difference. Yeah. Yes. But uh, we we have we've had a several. Um, we opened it up for panel submissions this year because one of our one of our, you know, kind of driving forces was, you know, why can't there be, you know, a, a low cost admission toy show that also has a full slate of programming, just like a big show. Mm -hmm. So we very much try to operate like we're a big show, but we're a small show. We're, we're a small operation. You know, you can get in, you know, if you buy an advanced ticket, you can get it for five bucks, you know, for a day. It's not, it's not a big, you know, it's not a big convention center type thing, but why, you know, especially if we have, you know, people who will do this just for free admission, kind of, why can't we open this up and have, you know, mm -hmm. lots of panels? So last year we kind of drove the process and we kind of dictated what the panels were going to be. And then we went and found people to give those panels. This year we just kind of opened it up and said, Hey, what, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to, what do you, you want to put on display? What's your passion? Mm -hmm. you know, we got more than we need. So we will have, you know, a full slate of programming Very nice. of people, you know, just sharing what they, what they love. Yeah. I'm That's awesome. Racking my brain. I'm trying to remember if I actually submitted anything. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I may have submitted something. I don't know. <laughs> well, even if you didn't, there's always next year. Yes, that's true. As, uh, there were so many conventions this year where I've submitted panels to and I can't keep track. I should probably start myself an Excel spreadsheet or something. <laughs> but even if I didn't, I'm sure there will be plenty of people who submitted interesting stuff that I will look forward to uh, attending and, and seeing. I know that there were several that I attended last year and I ended up becoming friends with some of those people. It's like the first time I'd ever heard of this person and now we're like you know friends and meet up at conventions and all that so well that's one of the great things about especially the smaller shows it happens i think at the bigger shows but i think it happens to a better a, a more uh frequent degree at, at smaller shows because the, the people aren't celebrities i mean they're mm -hmm. they're just other local people who you know love this or that and mm -hmm. If you love it too, you know, you stick around and talk to them afterwards and then, you know, next thing you know, you're friends. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And actually Midwest Toy Fest last, it was last year, obviously, um, but Midwest Toy Fest was the first time that I ever seriously cosplayed at an event. Oh, wow. So that was also my, my dipping my toe in the cosplay pool and drinking the Kool-Aid and now I'm completely roped into the entire thing so thank you for that <laughs> it's just a good chance to to to, to show to showcase that talent mm -hmm. yeah i remember you know going and being all nervous because it was like wearing my first cosplay going to something like this and i'm like oh i hope people like me and i hope i'm not making a fool of myself and people are like hey can i get a picture i'm like Sure, because <laughs> you're all there having fun together. Yeah, well, and the, you know, there's some really, you know, they're really good cosplayers, and um, yeah, then there were the noobs like like me, but you know, the, everyone was very welcoming. It was exciting to watch like the cosplay contest and see what people come up with, and it was like attending my one of my first cosplay contests. I think it was my first ever cosplay contest. Watching one. And just watching the the different co you know 
outfits that people came up with and, you know, the skill level and all that. And I'm like, this is awesome. I want to do more of this. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there were a lot of really great costumes last year. I was, I was impressed. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, even though this is a smaller event, that, that cosplay is encouraged. Um, oh, you know, especially we you know with a name like Midwest Toy Fest, people are going to be like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to go buy." It's an you know it's this event at this hotel. I'm going to go buy vintage you know Star Wars toys and Magic the Gathering cards. It's like no, there's other stuff going on, including people cosplaying, which is awesome because we all we're not just one trick ponies. We're all into everything. So well, there's so much bleed over. I mean, we we tried to you know kind of define you know what is this show about? And it's like, well, you know, toys are based on something that's in a movie that people also like to cosplay as. Mm -hmm. Someone made a comic book on. Like, it's it's so intertwined at this point that, you know, we wanted to just be, you know, encompassing, you know, as much good stuff as we could. Mm -hmm. And anybody, think... you know, that's out there, you know, if you're, if you're a first-time cosplayer or whatever, you should totally feel free, at least at this show. I mean, I would think at most shows, but... At our show, come do it. Be with you. You will find encouragement. You will find support. You know, we we try to foster that environment, and you know, we'll have cosplay judges who are cosplayers themselves, and we look for people who are you know not judgmental, who are who are in it to help people and and to to appreciate what people do. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I I think what happens with with cosplay is. Like, like you'll go to a show, you'll go to a convention or, or, or something, and and you'll just go like like you said, you're gonna go buy toys or, or see what's at the at, at the show, and then you see people cosplaying, and then you go like, you know, they you admire, and you're like, oh, oh, that's really cool, and some people think, I think I could do that, and then that's kind of where the whole cosplay community just sort of grows itself, I think, and and it's at these things. So like like when you have these shows that maybe maybe people wouldn't initially think, oh, I could cosplay at that. But even when you, you you encourage that and have those the, the those events those those contests and things like that and panel discussions that that kind of just helps it you know help helps encourage people to do that so that is yeah that's definitely a highlight. Yep. Oh. Um. Obviously, you know, uh, a, a two day event. Um. That's two full days of uh of stuff so um i guess i guess this would probably be a good point to uh to talk about the uh the details that if you are thinking of coming or want to come what they need to know you know dates okay. times location sure. that cost that sort of thing well our dates are november 5th and 6th that's a saturday and a sunday um on saturday we're gonna the show's gonna run from 10 a.m to 7 p.m and on Sunday, it'll run from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we're out at the Wyndham West in Indianapolis, which is out where the old airport was. Um, uh, it's just off Executive Drive. And uh, for a one-day pass, if you go online and buy it in advance, it's $5. Uh, for a two-day pass in advance uh, is $8. Mm -hmm. And then if you decide to buy the day of the show, um, a one-day pass is $8, and a two-day pass is $12. So that's still pretty pretty affordable, even if you get the pass the day of. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I that's so. that's inc that's incredible that you guys can can offer a show like this for so cheap. So we try to make it to where you know it's it's cheaper than going to the movies. Um, that's that's kind of the guiding philosophy, and mm -hmm. you know, then offering you know obviously as much you know content as someone wants to take in. Um, so yeah, that's we're trying to get you the most bang for your buck. Um, it, it, it really is for us a labor of love. It's a it's a passion thing. It's not a it's not a let's make some money or let's try to capitalize on something. It's it's a let's provide a space for our community to to hang out and have fun. Very nice, very nice. And this this far out, or I guess this this close, are are you guys? Um, I think I think it said on the website you're you're still taking panel submissions till. For another um, week or so? Are you still taking panel say, submissions? Yeah, if someone uh, had a panel idea, they should submit it uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Um, we're getting ready to, to review probably in the next week or two. Okay. Um, and, and 
try to figure out, you know, how many we can fit and what's got the broadest appeal. Okay. We know we're going to have to tell some people no just because we have too many. Right. Um, that, that we can do. So we're going to try to base it very much on how, which panels can, well, the most people get something out of. Okay. Um, rather than like, you know, oh, you know, this is cool. Well, I like this personally. I, I want it to be something where the, the biggest swath of people gets a, get something out of it. Um, so yeah, I would say definitely, you know, by, by the end of August, um, get those in by the end of August if, if you're interested because we're going to be making some decisions very soon. Um, but we've, we've got, you know, we definitely have a lot of really great submissions and it's going to be tough to, to narrow them down. Okay. And are you still accepting uh, uh, vendors? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, we are very close to being sold out of artist space. Um, and we offered this year, we decided to try to do uh, 10 by 10 booths. Um, so we made a limited number of 10 by 10 booths in addition to having tables. And, and all the 10 by 10 booths sold out like, pretty much immediately. Okay. Um, but we do still have That's some right. vendor tables left. We have some space to fill. So if, uh, if people are out there want to, have, you know, want to be a vendor or if uh, you know somebody that you really want to be a vendor at our show, let them know. Um, we're still taking uh, vendor applications. Uh, you can do it all online. You just create an account, fill out an application, and you get a PayPal invoice that you can uh, pay right online. So um, I expect that we'll, we'll fill up here in the next probably month or two. Okay. But um, we do still have a little bit of space left. Very nice, very nice. And you guys utilize, like, this, all of the space, too. I remember last year, like, it wasn't just, like, in the ballrooms. There was stuff out in the hallways and in corners. So you get, you yeah. know, you make sure to utilize as much that's allowed by the fire marshal. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um... You know, it's a significant investment to, to rent that space. Um, so we try to get every, you know, bring every last square foot of entertainment out of it and, and make, you know, make it as as awesome for people as we possibly can, which, I mean, again, we're, we're just, you know, a few people. We're not professional, you know, event organizers, and we're not uh, we're not a big show. We don't, we don't have the kind of clout where we can go into the convention center downtown and, you know, and do that kind of thing, but... This is what this is what's within our bandwidth, and, and we, we try to operate like we're a big, you know, a big player, but we're just a, a little con. Very nice, very nice. So. And so at this point, um, obviously, you guys have a website, um, MidwestToyFest dot com. So, and you guys are also on the other social medias as well. Yeah, we're on Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook. You can find us under Midwest Toy Fest on all of those. We do still have a Google Plus page, I think, but um, nobody it, uses us. <laughs> yeah, nobody uses it, so we don't really either. update it. Um, <laughs> but if, you know, if for that one person out there still using, using Google Plus, I think we do have a. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, we, we try to we try to share different content on our different channels. So um, we do photography and try to put that out on you know on Instagram that we don't necessarily share on Twitter or Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to we try to make each channel have its own you know unique content. Obviously, with Twitter, you can put more updates out without annoying people. And you know, we try to limit our Facebook posts to you know no more than one or two a day at, yeah. at the most. Yeah. So you know, if you follow us on different ones, you'll see a slightly different side of things. Hmm. Fun on all the social medias. Come play we on try. all of them, like like the rest of us. We're on all the social medias, so. Well, very nice, very nice. Well, uh, best of luck to you as you uh, work <laughs> on uh, on everything leading up to uh, the, uh, the this year's uh, event. Um, I, I'm sure your plate is very full and probably going to get more full the closer we get uh, to November. <laughs> I'm sure you're looking at the calendar going, how is it almost Labor Day? <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, that's, and that's, honestly, that was the way it was last year, too, except for it was, you know, earlier in the year. Yeah. But, um, there's never enough time. There's never enough hands. Yeah. You know, it, it's always, there's, there's always something more you could do, and oh, yeah. you, know, you just do the best you can and, and get as much out there as you can for, for the attendees, and, 
and, you know, try to build on it every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure like, you know, the, the night before you're stressed out and everything, and you're hoping it all goes well and then it does go well and you, and you're, you're the people who've come, they have a good time and they probably don't even notice that you're, that you've had so much stress the last couple of months for it. But I think that, I mean, I, I put on smaller or help put on smaller events before and just when, when you see all those people coming in and having a good time, that makes it all worth it. Yeah. Those, those couple of days. And you think someone, can we do it again? <laughs> Someone actually said to me during the show, because I was stressing out over some, you know, minor detail, Mm -hmm. and they said, you know, hold on, stop, just look around, look at all these people that are having a good time. And that really put it in perspective, more so than it had been, you know, I had kind of lost sight of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and, you know, that that really is what it's all about. And that's, that's how we measure the success is if we feel like, you know, people came and had a good time, then it it was a success. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Well, um, you know, obviously, you know, leading up to it, if there's anything that we can do, and we tried to share, I know we tried to share stuff on social media, especially with the smaller local stuff in our area. We tried to, to push that out there because obviously word of mouth is your best friend. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll keep pay, posting stuff on our own social medias to, to help get the word out for you guys because obviously more bodies through the door is uh allows the the event to to grow um, right, right. yeah and we appreciate it and yeah we've gotten such phenomenal support from um you know several podcasts in the, in the local community and mm-hmm. local you know stores and things that um it's really awesome and, and that's one of the, the things that i'll never um i'll never regret you know getting involved in things like this is because i've met so many awesome people that are doing so many awesome things mm-hmm. um that you know, that alone you know make, makes it on a personal level worthwhile. Um, but yeah, we, we we've had so much, so much, so much support from the podcast community that that, that was one of the things that was really exciting about getting to do the award show was to you know kind of uh, pay back a little bit to, to that community because we've gotten you know tons of support from you you guys and, and others that you know we, we really appreciate it. No, yeah, you're absolutely welcome. We're we're more than happy to 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 help us us little folks we gotta help each other out so um and obviously my fellow co-hosts are a bit far away to attend um but i will be there uh have it on my calendar i know well in advance and i make sure that I, I shouldn't have any conflicts so i should be able to attend uh both days this year so for you know my fellow hosts and any of our listeners who maybe can't make it but want to I guess attend, you know, virtually through me. Uh, I will make sure to, you know, post on Instagram and Snapchat and all the all that fun stuff over the course of the two days and the and get pictures and everything so that people can get a feel of what Midwest Toy Fest is like. Um, so um, that if you can't be there it, physically, you can be there in spirit, I guess. Um, so I will I will do my best to give Midwest Toy Fest the, the coverage that it, it deserves that we can, we can offer, um, once the event shows up and, uh, yeah. So we appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I've so got a, can, I've got uh, a cell phone with Instagram. I can, <laughs> it's like, I can do what I can. <laughs> yep. So if you, if you dear listeners want to follow our Instagram page, Rachel will be posting to, uh, posting there all her adventures at Midwest Toy Fest and any other little fun things we do. And as always, you can find links to our Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Pinterest at our website, the five ish fangirls podcast.blogspot.com. You can also uh, support us by uh, donating to our Patreon. And we all, as always, we thank our supporters there for, for supporting us from month to month. You, we can't can't express enough how how much that means to us that you guys are willing to spend your your hard earned money on on us it's like how oh, you love us, um, and then also as our, at our website we also have an Amazon an Amazon shop so if you go to Amazon through our website we get a small cut of that I mean you don't pay anything extra but we get a little bit of kickback from that from Amazon so we appreciate that we're also on iTunes and YouTube and Stitcher and uh, the Google one. 
Yeah, Google it's, Play. The Google Play. I, my brain just fritzed out on that one. I was like, okay. we're like I yeah. said, we're on all the social media. We're, on, we're so. on all the things. So, all the so things. download us, like us, review us. Even if you don't like us, fudge it a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also send us feedback uh, about any. If you're going to Midwest Toy Fest and saw something that maybe Rachel didn't catch, or you just want to tell us about your adventures there, please do. Our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com, and we will, if we get feedback from you, we'll read it out on the podcast. Mm hmm. And we'll also, if, if it's if it's flattering, we'll send it on to Mike and his team and say, hey, guys, look, you did a good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any, any feedback, you know, from our perspective is, is good feedback because there's no way to, to, you know, adjust things if we don't know if something's going wrong or going right. If we don't know, there's yeah. no way to, to, to make a correction. So that, that is true. I, I, I actually did have an experience with a local convention it was actually Salt Lake Comic Con their first year. I won't go into the whole story, but I sent them a, I sent them, I sent them a pointed email about a small problem that I had there, and they actually responded really quickly to me. So yes, if you if you're at a show, whether it's Midwest Toy Fest or something else, let them know. And you, if there's a problem, be polite about it, of course. But uh, you know that if you know, if if you never if you never tell them, they can't fix it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, again, Mike, thank you for taking yes, time out of your, <laughs> your what's left of the weekend <laughs> to, to chat with Any, us. Anytime, really. I mean, I'd be happy to come back anytime you guys want. Um, thank you so much for, for your support and for having me on. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. It was our pleasure. We, we enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with that, I guess we shall sign off for this week. Chrissy saying good evening from Salt Lake City. Mitch saying good night from Shore, Ontario. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Good night, everyone. to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. Any and all movies, books, games, and other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied.